Hello again, everyone. Today we're going to be practicing developing our skills writing. Now, in particular, today's lesson is going to be focused on fighting, boring language. So, skillful writing is not easy. It's not an easy thing to do, and practice here will make perfect. So, let's practice a little bit. Today, like I mentioned before, we will be focusing on vocabulary, which will make your writing more exciting, more intriguing, more accessible, and generally more interesting. So, let's begin by simply saying this. Words matter. They make your writing come alive. They make your writing have feeling. Just imagine a teacher who stands in front of you. I imagine you have a few of these and just kind of talks like this in a very boring tone of voice and just kind of does this all day and they put you to sleep. Using boring language in your writing does the same thing on paper. So let's look at an example. Let's see exactly what I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you that, you know, I like reading. Harry Potter is a very interesting book. It is my favorite book. So, if I say this, do I really think that Harry Potter is that interesting? Or does it sound a little bit boring? Here, it could almost sound like I'm saying, yes, of course, Harry Potter is quite interesting. I don't sound sincere, because if it's my favorite book, I should feel some strong emotions about it. So verbs like interesting, like, to be, in writing, these are dull, they're boring, they're, they're like eating bread without anything on it. It just gets old after a while. So to return to our example, how can I express interesting a little bit better? Well, I could tell you that Harry Potter is an absorbing book. What do I mean? I mean that when you start reading it, it will take over your life and you cannot do anything else. It will take all of your attention and your interest. Or I could formulate this in passive voice as well. I was completely absorbed in reading this book. It just affected me so much that I could think about nothing else but reading Harry Potter. Or I could say, Harry Potter is a fascinating book. Here, fascinating means captivating. It makes me look at life with a different perspective, or it makes me take on a new viewpoint. Or I could say that the book is amusing. I find it funny. Or that it's riveting. It holds my attention and it doesn't let go. It makes me completely engrossed in its action or even that the book is compelling. It calls on me to analyze a problem more highly and in greater detail and with more perspective. Do you see how all of these words make my feelings about the book seem much stronger? Here, I have all of these better words, these better adjectives that I can substitute for the word interesting. Now, as previously mentioned, I can use synonymic adjectives or varied sentence structure. For example, the book covers fascinating information. Or the novel, which was the author's first, is entirely captivating or entirely captivated me. Or even other sentences like, the book is a real page turner or it's a book that you cannot put down. Here in all of these examples, I'm giving you more detail. I'm really expressing my feelings, not just staying with interesting. Now, generally speaking, when writing an essay, article, report, whatever, then the vocabulary that you use should vividly but accurately convey your point and your feelings. So try to choose more creative and more descriptive words in your essays. Let's examine a few sentences together and discuss how we can actually make some phrases more expressive and more descriptive. I might look at a sentence like, the student is very clever. Very, it's, it's bread by itself. It's 
boring. What about Nick is a good football player? How much information does good really give me? I mean, he's, he's not bad. Is that enough? Not quite. He has a nice personality. Okay, what else? This dress is of bad quality or of poor quality. Nah, okay, how? How is it bad? How is it poor? It's fun to go there. Okay, why is it fun? How is it fun? There's more than one kind of fun, right? I don't know this thing. Same problem. What's thing? What am I, what am I talking about? I need to be more descriptive. Even if I say, we came late to the railway station. My meaning here is completely clear, but it's boring. So let's look at some phrases because very good, bad, nice, fun, thing, come, and go are the most overused, boring words in the entire English language. So let's get rid of them today. Let's make your speech more interesting. Now, some synonyms that we can use to make very much more interesting are words like extremely, remarkably, highly, and eminently and incredibly. Or if I want to change good, I can say wonderful, valuable, first class, superb, nice. We can change nice to cordial, gentle, pleasing, well-mannered, sincere, charming. Or words like bad, we can change to poor, defective, cheap dissatisfactory, inferior, unacceptable, unfavorable. Or words like fun, I can change to enjoyable, entertaining, amusing, or lively. Now, thing has a slightly different problem. Thing is a non-descriptive noun. It doesn't fully convey the meaning, so you can replace it with element, reason, issue, object piece of information or even phenomenon. To be more descriptive, what thing exactly are you talking about? Because there's quite a difference between a reason and an issue, right? And finally, to come, we can replace with, or to go, we can replace with more descriptive verbs of motion, to arrive, to drive, to enter, to leave. Now, to sum up the following words, are highly overused in writing and in speaking, and generally you should avoid them when you write. For verbs, the verbs to come, to do, to go, to enjoy, to get, to give, to grow, and to make. For nouns, activity, thing, part, look, and fun. Or for adjectives, amazing, beautiful, bad, big, good, boring, difficult, interesting, easy, happy, excellent, and nice. Now, this isn't a complete list of boring words. These are just some of the worst offenders, as we would call them. They're the most commonly overused and most commonly boring words that people use in their essays which make them less effective. So, we've already talked about stronger equivalents to some of the more boring words. So let's work on these nouns, activity, part, and look. And let's see how we could change a sentence to make it a little bit better and more descriptive. At the very least, more engaging or more interesting. First, I usually spend much time on this activity. If I use the word activity in this sentence, it sounds very general. You don't have any impressions about my feelings about this activity. Do I like it? Is it entertaining? Is it tiresome? You need more info to properly understand me. So here, I could replace activity with the following nouns, task, exercise, project, job, pastime, pursuit, 
enterprise. Here, a task tells you that it's related to my work, or I feel like it is work for me. If I say exercise, it means that I feel like it's practice, or it's training me for something. For a project, I think it's educational, or for science, or even something very large, a large task for my job. Similarly, job lets you know that I feel like it is work, it's an occupation. Whereas pastime lets you know that I feel like it's my hobby, I would do this in my free time. Or even a word like pursuit, which lets you know that it's also in my free time, I do it for fun. Now, in a second example, a part of a pie had been eaten. Here, part has the same problem as before. Part is not descriptive. It doesn't tell me how much or how little. Instead, I could say a fraction of a pie had been eaten. Here, it means not much or far too few. In this case, I would think that it was only maybe a small slice of pie that had been eaten. Or an allotment of pie. Or a serving of pie or a small amount of pie, or a ration of pie. Here, all of these are more descriptive. They tell me how much. How much pie had been eaten? One serving, or one slice. Next, in a third example, the girl sitting on the bench had a sad look on her face. Now, look here does not express why someone was sad. It just means that, to me, she seemed sad. I looked at her and I said, oh, she looks sad. But I can be much more descriptive about why I think that she's sad. For example, I can say, she had a sad air. In this case, her air is her behavior, her manner, the way she's acting, makes me think that she's sad. Or, she had a sad effect. Here, she caused everything around her to seem more sad, or to seem more even hopeless, maybe. Next, a sad demeanor. The way that she presents herself, her manners, her behavior show her sadness. Maybe she was crying very, very bitterly, or even countenance. The expression on her face made her seem terribly sad. So, these are some descriptive words that we've exchanged, or some nouns that we've changed and made a little bit better, more intriguing, and more interesting. So now, let's move on to discussing verbs. So first, the example you have to do it if you want to achieve better results. Here, do can stand for literally any action, or almost any action, in the English language, especially if you're being a little bit lazy with your correct grammar. So, because do is so general, we should replace it. We need more information. For example, instead of do, I could say carry out or prepare, or perform, arrange. Here, arrange meaning to do some preparations or to work out a plan. As well as complete, or organize, or create, or undertake. Undertake meaning to accept responsibility. And there are many, many more. Here, I just want to use the correct descriptive verb rather than simply do or make. Now, another example, we enjoy holidays with you on the seashore. Enjoy? Okay, how much? To what extent? Why, why exactly do you like them so much? Here, it would be much better to say, instead of enjoy, love. We love holidays with you on the seashore. Here, love meaning to like enthusiastically or adore, to like someone or something very deeply, and very strongly, to appreciate, to be thankful for, to delight in, to receive joy from, to luxuriate in, meaning to lounge around. And there are many, many more. Here, 
I just want to use a stronger verb or a more descriptive verb rather than simply enjoy or like. In a third example, let's look at another very boring and sometimes confusing verb. If I tell you, I hope to get more information about the project, get has the same problem as do. Get is used in very, very many expressions and can mean very many different things. So here it would be much better to exchange it with a word which is more descriptive. For example, to gain, to acquire by one's own efforts, to elicit. This kind of has a negative meaning. It means to make a conclusion on the information received from someone or somewhere. To capture, to acquire the info by force or skill, or to obtain, or even to acquire, to receive. Here, I'm being more precise with my English. I'm telling you exactly how you will get it, not just that you will get it. Next, the example, next week we're going to the Canary Islands. Here, go. Okay. That tells me that you will leave your current destination and you will arrive in the Canary Islands. But that's it. I don't know why you're going. I don't know how you're going. I don't know anything else. I just know the basic information. So if I'm being more descriptive, I can say we're getting away to the Canary Islands. Here meaning we're going on vacation or on holiday. Or we're journeying. It's like an adventure to me. Or we're cruising, going by a very nice boat, very comfortable boat. Or escaping, again, going on vacation. We're getting away from our jobs and our daily life. Or even retiring to the Canary Islands, if I'm a little bit older and I don't have to work anymore. So that's all for verbs. And now we're going to move on to the last topic that we will discuss today, boring adjectives. So let's jump into our first example. The view out of the window of our hotel was awesome. Now awesome, it's very commonly used, especially by younger people and especially in American English. But it's not very descriptive. How was it awesome? Why was it awesome? How awesome was it? I don't know this. So, instead of awesome, I can say much better words like breathtaking or astonishing, impressive or even awe-inspiring or wondrous or thrilling. And these give you much more of an indication of my emotional state and my feelings. Next, her beautiful dress caught everyone's attention. Okay, it's beautiful. How? Why? What does it do? Is it a stunning dress? Is it an impressive dress? Is it fascinating? Is it luxurious? Is it striking? Is it alluring? What is it? Here, all of these words tell me exactly how it is beautiful, not just simply that it is. Next, if I say, you are such a happy child, and happy is such a boring word, because happy can be a lot of different things. There are many different ways to be happy. Someone can be lively or full of life, or cheerful, in a good mood and spirit, or playful, wanting to play all the time, delightful, meaning that it's a very great pleasure to spend time with someone, or even mirthful, full of gladness. And moving on to boring, if I say it was the most boring film we've ever seen, okay, how was it boring and how boring was it? I could say it's monotonous. It felt like the same thing over and over. It was tedious. It felt like it would never end. It was unexciting. Just nothing made me excited. It was drawn out. It was too long. It was stale. It felt old. It was interminable, so boring that you just wanted it to end immediately, but it wouldn't. 
Here, all of these give, tell me how boring it was, and they tell me exactly how you felt. Because if you just tell me boring, again, I, I think it's not that bad, really. But if you tell me the film is interminable, then I will know exactly how you felt. And finally, the task was too difficult, but you got through it successfully. Now here, difficult. Difficult may seem strange as a boring word, but difficult, again, does not give me more information about how it was difficult or why it was difficult. Instead, I could say it was challenging or laborious. Here, laborious meaning it required a lot of physical or mental work. It was backbreaking. It felt like such a difficult task that if I had to carry it, it would break my back. Or it was exhausting. It made me so tired I couldn't do anything. It was demanding. It was intricate, meaning mentally hard and very complicated. Here, difficult can really have another meaning. Complicated, complex, perplexing, problematic. For example, the relationship is perplexing or complicated, etc. Here, this is another problem with many of these difficult or with many of these boring words, is that many of these boring words have multiple meanings that change depending on the context. And sometimes it can make your meaning unclear. So it is much better to use the proper vocabulary and more descriptive vocabulary in both your writing, most importantly, and your day-to-day -day speech. Now, that's it for today. Be sure to enrich your vocabulary by studying multiple synonyms of very common words, by looking up a, or getting a good English thesaurus and reviewing all of the vocabulary that we have presented for you today. And remember also, during your writing task, to go through and substitute any boring words in exchange for more interesting, more descriptive, more engaging, more enticing language. This is something that I myself have made a point of using my entire life. And it is something that I have always been complimented for by other native speakers and by people in general. And this is something that if you do it in your daily speech, it makes you sound very impressive and very fluent. So I would highly encourage you to practice using these and incorporate them into your speech. And that's everything for today. Study hard and practice with all of these. Some of it may sound a little bit strange at first, but you'll get used to it in no time. And I'll see you in the next lesson.